Hello folks, Mark Yerkes here, coming to you from the ancient medieval city of Kotor, Montenegro. And today we're going to discuss a little appreciated aspect of our Christian faith. So stick around. Kotor, Montenegro has an eclectic history. Ancient Roman mosaics, Venetian architecture, and a host of other cultural contributions. Founded as an Illyrian city, it was conquered and ruled by the Roman Empire, followed by the Byzantines, the Bulgarians, Serbians, Hungarians, Bosnians, Venetians, Ottomans, the Austrians, and French. Then, during World War II, it was occupied by the Italians and Germans. After the war, it became part of Yugoslavia, finally gaining its independence only recently in 2006. The Bible points out that perseverance is increased through tribulations. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. The people of Kotor have definitely been taught patience over the centuries. That patience is now being demonstrated by its tolerance of tourism, as cruise ships have made Kotor a regular stop along the Adriatic coast. Don't be fooled by the casual atmosphere of the off-season. During the summer months, it can be crowded. Kotor is considered the most well-preserved medieval wall town in the Mediterranean. The earlier wall was renovated by the Venetians and is labeled as such. They are 20 meters thick and still complete. They are the most visible sight in Kotor. And visitors can take an enjoyable walk atop its ramparts. The old town itself has a medieval ambiance, and that is part of its charm. Though modern stores and bistros have staked out their niches, you can still sense the past. The residents know what they have here and they don't want to lose it. The history of some families goes back centuries. Turn any corner down any one of the narrow cobbled stone streets and you're liable to come upon a plaza. And in that plaza, you will definitely find a church. Today, 80 to 85 percent of Montenegro's population claim to be Orthodox Christians. That is a significant change from 100 years ago, when it was approximately half Orthodox and half Roman Catholic. Many of the former Catholic churches are now Orthodox places of worship. But one church in Kotor has not changed. It is the Cathedral of St. Trifon a martyr under Emperor Trajan Decius in the mid-3rd century. Some of his relics are still located in the cathedral treasury. Relics are sometimes placed in ornate reliquaries that resemble the part of the body from which the bone was taken, such as an arm for an arm bone. On special occasions, these relics may be carried through the streets in procession, Kotor is not the only town that contains notable religious sites. In fact, there is another place worth visiting just a short distance away. If you don't mind waiting a while for the correct bus. Parast was a small fishing village in its early days. Even today, its locals enjoy harvesting the bounty of the Bay of Kotor. But tourism has become a new boost to its economy. Where I'm standing now is in the village of Parast, just about a 30-minute bus ride outside of Kotor. It's an old fishing village, and there's nothing particularly spectacular about it, except that the people of this village left behind a legacy that goes back 500 years. And the source of that legacy lies just offshore, there are two small islands within the bay that were set aside for religious purposes. One can be visited and the other cannot. 
St. George Benedictine Monastery is closed to the public and is occupied by a small contingent of monks, who, from the beginning of the monastery in the twelfth century, have regularly ferried across to minister to the people of Parast. The second island is open to visitors. Tourists can pay a reasonable five euros for a round trip to Our Lady of the Rock, the only man-made island in the Adriatic. As the legend goes, more than five centuries ago, an icon of the Virgin Mary was found on the natural reef that existed here. Being a very superstitious and religious people, the people began building this reef up into an island. They did so first by sinking some old ships that had ballast stones in them. But then over the next 200 years, they continued as they went out to sea to fish to drop stones until this reef was completely built. A small entry fee gives access to the church and its museum. The icon that was found on the reef in the year 1452 is located above the altar for everyone to see. But it is not the only treasure. A steady stream of votive offerings, gifts in gratitude for answered prayers, can be seen within the sanctuary and the museum. Museum guides are happy to tell the story. From 15th century to 16th century, people built the island. From 16th century to 17th, they completed the church. And that devotion still is present today by sailors, but by people. It's an active Roman Catholic church. But uh, the big silver collection of plates which uh, divide paintings in its interior is telling more than 2,000 stories of salvation, individual stories of salvation, of prayers, and still those silvers come to us. Sailors presented paintings of ships in thanks for safe return despite storms and other dangers they may have faced. Crucifixes within cases and silver plaques hanging upon the walls commemorate different events, and silver tiaras were given in gratitude for births and other blessings. Weapons were also given to remember God's protection in times of war. A large Ottoman force attacked Parast at one point, but God intervened. The town had only a few men at arms, yet the first volley from the defenders killed the Ottoman commander. Whether the Ottomans regarded this as an evil omen, or whether the commander was the only person interested in attacking Parast in the first place, is unclear. But the army promptly loaded themselves back onto their ships and left. One highly regarded votive gift, which appears to be a silver cover for the altar painting, is located in the sanctuary as thanks for this deliverance. However, the most cherished item within the museum is an embroidery made with the finest silk, gold thread, and other materials. It was a work of love that took one woman 25 years to complete from 1803 to 1828. In front of one item which is retained the most popular item of all the collection, but priceless and unique piece of art as well. Uh, something what created not a famous artist, but an ordinary woman which was living in the town 200 years ago. The images of Mary, baby Jesus, and the various angels demonstrate the artist's persistent dedication. The hair of all the images, starting with Mary and Jesus, were made from her own hair. As we progress from angel to angel, we see that their hair is gradually becoming more and more white as the woman aged. We live in a fast-paced world. It seems that media and social engineering have trained our culture to expect immediate gratification. We have fast food, fast cars, fast service, and fast relationships. This emphasis on speedy results has even slopped over onto our spiritual lives. When our efforts do not bear fruit swiftly, we tend to stop trying. When our prayers are not quickly answered, we stop praying. But the Holy Scriptures do not emphasize speed of results. In fact, just the opposite. True faith is demonstrated by trust and patient endurance. As the psalmist wrote, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. 
Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. If you do visit Kator, take an evening stroll through the old town when the tourists are gone. You may find it easy, as I did, to imagine yourself back in the Middle Ages. The cobbled stones will echo upon your footsteps, and the church bells may chime their call to worship as they did hundreds of years ago. But don't be surprised if you turn a corner and discover the local band practicing for an upcoming event. For these Montenegrin citizens have learned that perseverance produces confidence and hope. Thank you for joining me on this visit to Kator and Parast Montenegro. Be sure to click the notification bell and the subscribe button, and together, by God's grace, we will discover more obscure Christian history. Thank you.